Welcome back to another Get In The Mix Isolation video. Today we're gonna to make this. And if you don't like it, that really hurts actually, to be fair. Okay, so what I've done here is I have loaded the product out with all the sounds that we are gonna use, so they're all ready to go. And I'll talk through each one a bit as we go and put everything together. So we've got this noise layer here. This is just gonna like fill in all the gaps basically and have this like nice undercurrent texture that makes a big difference to a track. This is a drum loop. With a lot of reverb and then a couple of echoes, Ableton echoes, uh, and then EQ to just have the top end. If I turn it up. Start off with the drums. So we got ourselves a kick here. I've got two layers to this kick. So let's just pour it to the floor. So we've got a kind of clicky top layer and then a another layer that carries the, the bass end. Two hits at the start. Clap, again, very simple. This is made up of another two layers. Now let's add our off hat. Now add some little hi-hats to get the groove going. Uh, now do not neglect the velocity of your hi-hats or any sound for that matter. Percussion hi-hats, very good to mess with uh, the velocity of the notes so you get a little bit of like dynamics to them, it makes them sound a lot more interesting and also contributes significantly to the groove. Percussion. So in the percussion we got this weird little like, uh... I don't know what you'd call that. It's almost like a vinyl scratch, but not. And this one, it's like a whip. Just simple little percussion, just fills in the gaps. Also, what I do like to add is like a, a constant hi-hat that's just like riding throughout underneath. And again, don't neglect the velocity on these. I'm actually gonna make the percussion two bars long. All right, so that'll do for our drums for now. We've got our kick, clap, hats, perks, and hats again. So now let's start messing with the bass line. For our bass line, we've got three layers. We've got our crunchy layer on the top, which sounds like this. In the middle, we've got this. And then covering the sub end, we've got this. The crunchy layer is a stock Ableton plugin. Uh, it's called Analog, and just drag it in and you have a reasonably good sound to work with, then it's just a matter of an envelope on the filter, giving it that sort of, uh, with a short decay, giving it that little snap, bringing down the filter a bit. The middle layer is an operator. Again, very simple sound. Just added some harmonics in whatever you'd call the second thing here. EQ'd out all the frequencies. What this layer does is sort of glues the top crunchy layer to our sub layer by filling in the gap. As for the sub layer, it again is an operator with some harmonics added and then saturated. It's mostly a sine wave. So now to write a bass line. Do most of the bass line with the crunch layer first and then we'll move it on to the, the other layers. We've got a nice rolling bass line going with the crunch layer. Bring it down to the bass low layer. And then we've got our bass sub, which I'll also copy onto, and then... I'm gonna mess with the bass crunchy layer and make it a little bit more interesting. All right, so I could probably spend all day messing about with that, but I must press on. This is our bass line. 
So you've got the crunch layer doing semi its own thing, uh, sort of creating that thing that you latch onto. You've got the sub layer that's really just thumping around. Low layer is kind of following it quite closely. Now one thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to use our percussion layer because there is a little click on You can use percussive sounds like clicks and tight sort of like poppy sounds to complement your bass because it adds this sort of like really attacky element to the notes of your bass line and it can really add to the groove and just makes it sound pretty cool. So we've already got like quite a chunk of the tune here. Now we're going to move on to our synth layer, layers sounds. Once again, standard Ableton stuff. I've basically just dragged in some presets to save. I'm not a sound design expert. If I copy the MIDI from my bass line, and what I do have here is a drone, one labeled drone synth, and the drone synth, I just have this droney synth that sort of like runs in the background and sort of ties everything together. This is a matter of taste. You don't have to do this. I like what it adds, and also you can then, a breakdown or something, you can then cut it out when it comes back in. It's actually really effective if you have that cutting out. So I'm gonna make, turn this into a chord, my bass line. So it's just this drony thing that just is constantly going. This is in analog, it's called Strings Lush, it happened one night. One thing I'm using a lot here is Ozone 8 Elements, which is this. I'm just using it for the imager. You can actually get this for the Isotope Ozone Im Imager for free, which is pretty good. Very handy for making mono or stuff like super wide. It adds, uh, adds a lot of mood to your tune, I would say. Now I've also got this little pluck. This again is from Analog, Johnny's Soft Pad. And what I've done here is I've added a filter with a rate of 16th notes. So it's just kind of, without the filter, it's just a sustained note, but with the filter, I've just got this. So you've got this quick little rhythm there from that. Now I could do like little bursts. That's quite cool, I like that bit deep. It's a little bit muddy feeling, so I'm going to drop an EQ on here, turn that down a bit. Now we've got a, another pad here. Now this thing... Alright, this is more deep house than I anticipated. Go a bit polyrhythmic with it, I think. I think this would be considered polyrhythmic. Get rid of that resonance a little. Again, this noise is just a sail keypad for wavetable. Wavetable is pretty good. Now, something I've done on this pad here, I've got a couple of notch filters basically using the EQ8, and I've dropped an LFO on them, and that will give a sound, quite a lot of movement and variation. And because it's not on the grid, they're just moving around randomly. That sound will like just be constantly evolving and changing. Very handy way to use LFOs and notch filters, especially on these like chordy sounds. So as you can see, we're really building up the layers here. Uh, and this will be, you know, your main chunk of music that you then break down, take apart and then turn into a six, seven minute tune. Finally, we've got this lead synth sound. Now this, you know, I'll use as sort of like a little melody type fill layer uh, just to add that extra bit of interest. So let's just do something straightforward here. Bring it up an octave. Again, just using these notes that we originally had from our bass line to create the chords, create this little melody layer. Let's see how this sounds. It's quite cool.
Now this sound is, uh, half of it is operator, half of it is analog. I have uh, muted the analog part, we're just using the operator, and it's called anti-gravity. I believe it's an operator preset. Quite a cool little sound. Now, one thing that I haven't actually done yet is I like to use Ableton's groove pulls. It's good to bring things off the grid a bit and get some swing. So I like to use Ableton's groove pulls. You basically come to this area and you press this and then you can go down. Uh, and typically I'll go for the MPC ones and we'll go to MPC 16. And then here you've got a selection from not too swingy to majorly swingy. In this case, uh, here I've gone for the 57, I don't know if that's a percentage, perhaps. So then we just apply that, and you can see it just knocks everything a bit off the grid. This is on our hi-hat, so this is before. And add our swing. Just adds this like little hoppy type feeling to it. And I'm going to do the same on the percussion. And I also do the same on the bass line. So now everything has been swang. I'm going to add a little note in here just to fill in this gap where the sub isn't. Oh, we've got this little effects layer down here. We'll bring in. Let's bring that in here. You know what, while we're here, let's add a vocal. Let's see if I've got a suitable vocal sample somewhere. He's from Next one. Here's a little vocal thing, a bit whispery, and then I've reversed this other and little, little details like that, you can just keep adding. So there you have it, that's pretty much, you know, all the elements that you need to work with and then to stretch out and create uh, an entire track from. You know, you've got your drums and percussions. You've got your bass line, some synth layers. Uh, these are a bit more deep housey than I anticipated, but works pretty nicely, I think. Uh, your noise layer on the bottom. We've also added this, this vocal. But yeah, it all comes together. I will include a download link to this project in the description so if you want to grab it you can do and have a fiddle around see a bit more in depth what's going on so that's it i hope you learned something from this thank you for watching subscribe if you enjoyed the video drop a like and comment any requests if there's something you want me to cover more specifically and i shall see you next time